I'm back after my break. Welcome to Planescape Torment. Oh, I'm so excited to play this again. Um, Alright, to recap what happened last time, uh, I, the fire-eating dragon, made it out of the mortuary room where I was lying on a slab. And now I have a scalpel and a key, and a sense of purpose to get out of the morgue. Um... Well, I guess it's technically a mortuary, but, you know, it's splitting hairs now, isn't it? Um, okay, female zombie, female zombie. Mort told me not to hurt them. Uh, now, I think... Okay, so you can you can see what's on these things. It says there's rust and slabs. Oh, this is such a gross place. I'll talk to the zombie worker, see if he has anything to say. Oh, okay, something interesting is happening with the zombies. It's always important to just talk to everybody. You never know who actually has something interesting to say. Uh, I guess that's not true. There's a lot of unnamed people just wandering the streets once I get to the city. That, you know, it's just pointless to talk to. But, um... Hey, looks like someone for forgot to tell this sod to stop walk walking the rule of threes. What do you mean? These corpses don't have much left in the attic, so they can't do more than one task at a time. When they're told to do something, they keep doing it until someone tells them to stop. This poor sod probably finished some task and they forgot to tell him. Hmm. Who gives them their commands? Either one of the caretakers here, or else whatever necromancer raised them out of the dead book. Probably one of the caretakers here. They're the ones who need the cheap labor, after all. I see. What was it you said before about the rule of threes? There's a lot of little things like this in in the world, you know, a uh, uh, planescape. Uh, there's their own culture, which I think is very interesting, because a culture forms from all the cultures of all, like, the multiple worlds. Think of this place like... It's like a nexus between worlds, so, like, a Stargate kind of thing, or a, um... Uh, Babylon 5. That's why I relate this game to more of a space thing, because there's all these different worlds colliding. I mean, they're not literally zooming through space. It's magical planes of existence that you get to through magic. Um, although I think Spelljammer, there's actually space. Like, that world. But that, that one didn't make it very big, so I'm not sure there's a lot of that included here. Um... Yeah, there's not a lot on space in the D&D &D worlds, but uh, um, this is the, the closest thing to it, because you magically portal through different dimensions. Um, it sort of circumvents that whole sci-fi problem of, like, well, how do you get through all that space? You, you know, you got to make up things like warp drive and things that aren't scientifically proven yet. Um, but in this world, it's like, well, magic. Easy. That's how we get from one place to another. Entirely different worlds. Oops, did I just click on something? Who gives them their commands? Okay, yeah, I accidentally clicked on something. All right, let's keep on moving. Actually, let me look. Can I examine the zombie? No, he just says the rule of threes. Updated my journal. Well, the rule of threes is one of those laws about the planes, about things tending to happen at threes, or every everything composed of three parts, or there's always three choices, so on and so forth. You don't sound like you hold much faith in it. It's a load of wash. If you ask me, look for a number, any number, and try to catch some great meaning in it, you're going to find plenty of coincidences. That's, that's true. <laughs> I want to talk about the zombie a little bit more. Eh, I'll ask him. So why are you talking in a triangle at the corpse alone? He doesn't know. Alright, something to pick up here. Nothing. What about this zombie? I'll try to take the bandages from the zombie. <laughs> it's not even holding the band. Okay, so the corpse was bandaging up these bodies for some reason. Um, and I just took the bandages out and it's still just doing the motion as if it had the bandages in its hands. So I just stole some bandages. Alright, so I got some bandage. What did I get? Got one bandage. Well, it's not a lot. Well, it's early in the game, so... Ooh, receiving room log. I can read this. Mortuary. The records check to determine the shells of the contracted.
the last page has been cutting out, so I'm miss it's missing a page. So maybe I could find that page. I just dropped it on the floor here. You see, it's right there. I could pick it up again if I wanted to. I don't think it's actually useful for anything. Iron Fists. Now, if I remember right, I think the Iron Fists, yeah, they do more damage than the Scalpel. Um, I don't think I'm going to be fighting a lot of zombies, so uh, yeah, Iron Fists it is. And I'm going to be a rogue anyway. Um, when I get to it, I'll talk about how specialization works and how I'm probably going to go for Fists and Clubs as someone who is going to be mostly a rogue. Um, or sorry, there's not rogues in this edition, it's, it's Thief. It's Thief. Now we talked to Dahl, which is a very interesting character. He's in front of this giant book where he writes down, I think, the names of the dead or something like that. Um, I'm going to talk to him. He's unlike the other Dustmen. He's, I think he's actually in the Planescape books. Like, you can meet him when you play this game um, in the role-playing version. Um, he's always on the edge of death. I'm wondering if he's some sort of, like, god or something. I'm just going to quickly go through these. There's not a lot of interesting thing. Um, he'll update his journal about certain things, about who he is and, like, what dustmen are. Um, I'm going to explain really quick. Dustmen are these people who believe that sort of... I'm paraphrasing here, but sort of the, um, the real world, the world of Planescape, is like a lie. Now, um, Sigil sits on this tall spire... It's this like donut-shaped um, structure on the inside of the donut. That's how they have like their gravity or whatnot. Is the city? So you walk around, and if you look straight up, you can see the other side of the city. It's not a sky horizon. See the sky? You got to kind of like, angle this way because it's like this concave donut shape. Um, and and that that's how they get their light from the various sources of the planes. Um, it comes light and dark because this it's just this it's it's just a circular uh, thing um, and their their gravity is all out so right now I'm standing somewhere in this this donut um, and on the base of the spire you have what's called the outlands and that's just this like it's the closest thing to a prime material plane a prime material plane being like an earth-like planet um, I guess earth-like is probably not the best term maybe more of a Tolkien like worlds there's like Oerth is one, and um, Kryn is one. That's the Dragonlance one, um, and you know there's different there's different uh, Dungeons and Dragons worlds, um, but they don't exist on the same plane of existence. Um, you have to be a wizard and, and zap yourself to you know portal yourself to these other worlds, teleport. Um, I guess teleport's not quite the right word, but you know close enough. Um, trans dimensional locate. Um, now. On the end of the Outlands, on every on the every edge of it is what's called an outer plane. This will be explained later to uh, to my character, but I'm just gonna head, give you guys heads up now. There's the upper planes, which are the good places. There's uh, Elysium. There's the heavens. There's uh, Yazgard. You know, there's places like that up there. Um, on the lower side, there's the lower planes, which are like Hell, Carcery, the Abyss. Um, terrible things like that. And like right on the corners, there's uh, Limbo, which is the little realm of pure chaos. And then there's, um, uh, um, what is it called? I can't remember. Mechanus. Mechanus is the realm of pure order and law. Um, Mechanus meaning that, you know, like those machines there. Whereas Limbo, which is crazy chaos. Um, now, if you notice those places like Heaven and Hell, the Abyss, Yasgard, you know, those are places that, in mythology, the dead go to. So what happens is in the prime material worlds, or even out here in, in the Outlands, when something dies, their, uh, their like soul comes here. And they have a physical manifestation called a petitioner who is dead and sent to one of those realms. So since you can walk directly from those realms, uh, from the Outlands to those realms, petitioners theoretically can just wander right in. You can walk from hell to heaven if you knew the way, um, and took the journey. And Sigil's sitting right in the center. So you have these creatures from all over, all these different realms, um, who, who, who could physically walk there. So, to, so the idea that this world's an illusion and you're better off being dead, it's not that far-fetched to someone who just walks into dead people all the time. You know, um, the, the, the cast-off souls of, of, the, of the dead... Uh, they don't see that life is they, they they're like this is just it's it's just a nuisance basically 
um, it's better to be dead. Um, so the Dustmen are a faction or a group who believe that that's, that's the beginning. Like, you're just wasting time. Um, now, they don't believe that you should just kill yourself, necessarily. Um, although, if they, they say if you feel like you should kill yourself, you probably should just kill yourself. But um, uh, they think that it's of a high uh, moral imperative to make sure others also die. Um, and because of this weird um, idea, this philo philosophy, um, they have the ability to uh, for undead, like these zombies and stuff, um, to uh, they have what's called the if I can remember off the top of my head, uh, they have this pact with them that undead will not attack them, no matter where they are in the, in the whole universe of the planes, because they've so ingrained themselves into their philosophy. Now that's an example of there's many factions in Sig Sig Sigil, Sigil um, who uh, uh, since they're so ingrained in their philosophy, they actually become sort of part of the essence of it. And they'll have something like, some crazy power like that, like the Dustmen, um, uh, based on how they see the world. Um, so I'm just going to ask them a bunch of questions here. I'm not going to go through all these dialogues, but I want to get all this in my journal. Um, so I'm just randomly clicking around here. I don't remember, I don't recommend doing that. I say I, I would recommend reading through it, but uh, he just has a lot of dialogue that's just trying to help me explain what's going on here. See, the, the true death, that's what they shouldn't get. True death is non-existence, a state of void, beyond passion. That's what that's their true ascension. They think that's the best. Like, dying's one thing, but you, you're you going to have to die many times before you can find your true death. It's sort of like a reverse Buddhism. <laughs> and just like in Buddhism, they have their, um, uh, what do they call them, b b bodhavistas or something like that? I, I said it wrong, I'm sure. People who have ascended, but they don't ascend... They don't fully ascend yet. They stay on the earth to help other people ascend. That's the way they see themselves. It's like, yeah, we should all die and die a lot, but I'm going to stick around so I can help others. Out of virtue, of course. Updated my journal. Updated my journal. My All right, he's telling me where Farad is. That's the guy who, who I, um, on my back, it was carved, said I need to find this Farad guy. Um, and he said he was the Knight of the Post. Um, Knight of the Post is slaying for a thief. I don't know how to interpret that. Knight of the Post. Like, I can see a Knight of something. What's What would a post be? Still drinking this raspberry cider. It is delicious. Mm hmm Nope, I can't interpret it. I don't know. Knight of the Post. If you if you could interpret what Knight of the Post means, like what's the significance? Is like is like post like after like or is it like here's my post or like a physical post? I don't know. I don't see how that makes him a thief. And normally those sayings like make sense, you know. But maybe it just doesn't translate because I don't speak whatever the common language is on the outer planes, <laughs> and it's just translated to English for me. That's also a possibility. I love little cultural things like that, even made-up cultures. But like real-life cultures have stuff like that too, where there'll be a saying which totally doesn't make sense in one language in another language, unless you know the cultural context. Um, the eternal boundary, the boundary between the shadow and the life, true death. Okay, I think I got everything I need from him. I talked to him a bunch. You see, he is an interesting character. He tells me a lot. He's he's like always on the verge of death. But um, well, let me talk to some more zombie workers. See if there's anything interesting about them. Oh, there's something interesting about this guy. Oh, I remember this one. Okay, the number one two zero one has been inked on the forehead of this corpse, and the ink has run down to its eyes, cheek, and jaw. You follow the ink. Tears down to the corpse's face. Oh, that's gotta look really cool. That would be an awesome cosplay. Be a zombie and write one two zero one and have the ink draw down. That's I gotta do that now. Okay, idea for cosplay: the <laughs> the one zombie in uh, torment. Um. 
Okay, what's this other detail that I also have to put on this cosplay? As you follow the ink, uh, you notice it has run down the stitching seals of the corpse's lips, so it's got to be stitched up. And has caught on what looks like the corner of a note stuck in the corpse's mouth, so a note, so I gotta... Okay, I'm gonna try to pull the note out. Oh, well, I have a scalpel, so I'll cut the stitches open. One, two, zero, one. Leave the corpse in peace. What do I got here? Please, to whatever to whatever dustman me reads this, I beg you, I know the legal obligation under the terms of the dead contract, but I'm prepared to offer more than my signing fee if you creep my, my body rather than raising it. I have arranged for this note to be left upon my body. If you're reading this, then please use this note as an instruction to accept the result in changing from, from my contracted duty. Let my contract number serve as the key. Okay. Contracts use number serve as the key. Corpse number 1201. Okay, so use... Um, so you'll find little puzzles like this in the game. And they're all text-based, but it, it's it's describing that there's a sheet of paper. Um, in one corner it says one, two, three, and then there's no number. Um, so he said, use my contract number, one, two, zero, one. So that means I want to... Okay, it says fold. So I fold in one, then two, then zero, then one. That's the, that's the answer. Um, series of marks. One in the upper right, that's one. That's two, that's three, that's zero. So I want to go one, two, zero, one. So one, uh, that one's gone now. So two, now zero, and then one. All right, it did something. Open the sides of the pyramid. I got experience points, woohoo! You peel back the sides of the pyramid. So I made like a pyramid, and then it disintegrates into dust, and inside is a triangle-shaped earring. Take the triangle-shaped earring. Now, if I remember right, um, I can't identify this now. Um, when you identify a magical item, uh, you can use a scroll, which is probably a bad idea, or a spell. I guess if you have a lot of scrolls, it's fine to just use one. Um, but usually, you know, spells are generally free. I can put this on to save space. Speaking of which, I can put this up here to save space. Um, uh, once I identify it, I believe it's going to be magical, and I can um, use it to gain 33 uh, copper coins. So I can use it three times only, though, and that's 99 copper coins. But if I recall right, I can sell this for 120, so I'd probably rather sell it than use it, because it's worth more money that way. There's a lot of little tricks like that in this game. Okay, did I already loot all these? I think I did. Okay. Does the female have any... No. Psst. You see the way she was looking at me, huh? You see that? The way she was following the curves of my optical bone. <laughs> oh, so curvaceous. Nice. You mean the blank-eyed beyond the grave stare? <laughs> what are you, blind? She was scouting me out. She was shameless the way she wanted me. Wanted you to go away, maybe. She was obviously distracted by me to pay attention to some stupid bobble, bobble heading, bobbling, bobbing head with a big mouth. That's right, she's into me. You? Yeah, right. Trust me, chits beyond the grave don't care about all that physicality, and I've, I've got a body, and I'm scarred and tough looking. They want a guy with spirit. That's me, chief. You? Corpses like you are as common as copper. Whatever, Mort, let's go. That's a weird dynamic. Arguing over who the zombie's sexually attracted to. Let's see, is this guy cool? Notice it could pay off talking to zombies. So he's 1664, and he's carrying books. I'm gonna examine those books. A loose page. I'll take the page, I'll read through it. Ah, it's that missing page from the receiving room. Take the page and leave. 
What's Mr. PH say? Slash moons, collector Farod. So these are these are fair, the ones that Farod collected. So one of these is probably me. Chest wound, mauling, Vashi, a Bashir type of demon. Collector Pox. Three commons, no possession, stripped knife. See, I only get three commons per body. Um, Age of Shell prevents identification. Like those on contracted work or so. I think this might be me. All right, so they're investigating Farad because he's bringing in bodies that look like they've already been prepared and buried. Um, Farad sells them corpses, and apparently so does Pox, this guy. Um... So this guy had fist irons. Oh, so this one was me. I had fist irons, and I had 13 commons, middle table, receiving room. Yeah, that's probably me. Copper earrings found lodged in the abdomen have been locked in the southeast preparation room. So southeast. So there's a copper earring around here somewhere. Now let me loot everything. Talk to the zombie. No, he doesn't have anything to say. If it's just talking to them, it's not usually anything cool. But if it's um, interacting with them, yeah, that, that's that's how you deal with zombies. You interact with them, just like real life. Just like real life. I will talk to Evine. Greetings. What's wrong with your hands? Updated my journal. Yeah, she's a tiefling, chief. They got fiend blood in their veins. Usually causes some ancestors of their shared knickers with one demon or another. Makes some of them addled in the head. And out of looking, too. I'll tap the woman. Uh, greetings. As she frowns at me. Oh, she gave me a quest. You! Find thread and embalming juice. Bring here to Evine. Go, go, go. I had some questions Updated first. My journal. She turns away. I guess she's deaf. I think the dusty chit might be a little short on hearing, chief. Let's lay off, shall we? It would be so much easier if, like, all the main characters were voiced, not just certain parts. Let me talk to this zombie, see if he's cool. Ooh, he's got stitches. Examine the stitches. See, interacting can be cool. Um, so I can get needle, needle and thread. So he's got a second designation. So what was his first designation? 506 and 73. Examine him again. So that might be evidence of Farad digging up corpses. I'll leave the corpse in peace. No reason to push him over. I think if uh, I knock this corpse over, he um, gives me an arm. Actually, let me just show you. There's no reason to keep this guy alive. Look, I can even be nice and try to help him balance. Oh, but then he falls over. Yep, and then I get his arm as a weapon. Um, which makes a club that it does a decent amount of damage. Um, actually, why not? I'll just use it as a weapon. Oh, um, no, the fist will be better just because of my... Eh, club does more damage, why not? And it looks cooler. Put this all in my... Quick items, quick item list. 
Quick items can be accessed here. Select items, I can just use them. Oh, I think they go away. Now, if I remember right, this is a special zombie. I can talk to him. Um, Shambling corpse gazes you with vacant eyes. The number 821 is carved in his forehead, and his lips have been stitched closed. Faint smell of formaldehyde emanates from the body. So, see anything interesting going on? You address the zombie and he blinks in surprise. Eh? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, you're not a zombie. Who are you? Updated my journal. The zombie is trying to respond behind stitched lips. He has a, pe a peculiar, half frightened, half angry expression. Who are you? What you want? I think it's just hard for him to talk. Who are you? What you want? I'm gonna lie. I was looking for you. Yes, I have a message for you. What message? I have new orders. Tell me your mission. Let me spawn the Dusties. See what I say, nothing more. What have you seen the Dusties do? Nothing. Still at watch. How can I escape from here? Can you escape through portals, he waves. Poof. Portals? Portals. Portals everywhere. Can you show me one of these portals? Alright, it says I need a crooked finger bone. A crooked finger bone. Where am I going to find Updated one of those? My journal. Must be somewhere. Look towards storage rooms. Alright, I have more questions. How'd you get to look like that? So we need some embalming fluid and stitches. Doesn't that hurt? Nope, makes me tough. So he just disguise. He takes embalming fluid and uh, needle and thread, and he just sews his lips shut, covers himself in the embalming fluid, disguises himself as a zombie because he's a spy. Um, is there anything else I want to know from him, Pharaoh? Updated my journal. Locked. Forced it. Oh, that's the, the earring you were talking about. And they said there was a specific zombie that that ring that that it's uh, associated with. Now I was told to get needle and thread and bombing fluid, and that's what I just got. So actually, does this guy need anything? She needed the needle and thread, though. Interesting character. Ooh. She's distracted by... Okay, when, when you get an opportunity to observe someone in this game, I recommend you take it. I'm gonna watch her as she sews the corpse shape. my journal. I feel a prickling along my scalp, and then suddenly your vision's swimming, blurred until... You are standing in front of a freshly slain corpse, rigor mortis making a mockery of its smile. The number 42 has been stitched into a scalp. The zombie is lying on a slab, and you have finished stitching up its chest. You have placed something inside, something that may prove to be useful on the way this way again. Ooh, okay, so I gotta find 42. Echo, keep these things safe and wait for my return. The memory of your voice is an echo, strange and hollow in your ear. You must cross your arms in front of your chest, and you, and to your surprise, the corpse does too. After a moment, the hands fall back to its side, and as it does, the vision fades until you are watching Evine hands make their stitching motions here again. Okay. 
Remember a grain of memory. Memories can give you additional experience points, skills, and may even lead you to something else of value later on. Tap her. And in this case, it will give me something of value, because I have to find 42 and um, cross my arms in front of it, apparently. Um, she wants the thread and the embalming fluid, so I'll just give her some. Now, thread and embalming fluid are good for me, because they can, um, both of them are heal me. I think embalming fluid actually gives me temporary hit points and some armor. Temporary. Um, but the needle and thread um, heal me for six, which is more than bandages. Um, but I'm giving them to her so I get the experience points. And also, if I wait... Uh, she starts to... Okay, she rolls her, her, her talons across me. She realizes that I need to be patched up a bit, so I'll play zombie. And I'll tell Mort, Mort, Mort to stow it. Shut up, Mort. Um, she sniffs at my scars. This one's in bad shape. Many scars. Wait. And she starts to sew me up so I can stay still or I can push her away. I'm going to let her work. My journal. And she gives me plus one hit points. Let her work. This may be the second time in my life. I'm thankful I don't have a nose. <laughs> The bombing food makes me feel better. Well, gain me a hit point. Now I have 21 hit points. How close am I to leveling? Oh, I'm fairly far from leveling. What about Mort? Mort's even further from leveling. I'm going. He's lower level. Now, if you notice, we have similar hit points. I just gained one. We both started with 20 hit points. Yet I'm level 3 and he's level 2. Um, that actually doesn't make much sense. Oh, it's because I didn't... You don't roll for max hit points. You, you, blah, blah. Um, that's slightly higher than average, so if, if it was like 6, 6, and 8, you know, that's that would get me 20. Um, looks like they gave him max hit points, though. Tw 10 and 10. So hopefully those little bonuses to my max hit points will eventually total up to 10. Uh, to cover what the lost hit points are. I will need a key. Now I think she's got a key. Although I might have just circumvented that whole thing. Because sometimes you can get a quest from this guy to get a key. Okay. So I guess I... I did something, probably because I, when I lied to him, I didn't say the right thing um, to get the quest to get the key. Yep. There's a lot of th things like that where you, you, you can uh, accidentally not get certain quests. No big deal. It's only worth a couple experience points. I might have actually gained more by doing a different version. What I should have done is get him to relieve me. I need a key to get in there? I guess there's a key up here then. It's the only other way to go. I'm gone. And now I'm on the next floor. Um, I'm going to leave it here, and this is the last part of this session, and I'll meet you guys next time. Um, floor 2 of the Mortuary. Thanks, guys. Bye. I'm the Fire-Eating Dragon, and signing off.